Hello, welcome to this next Substance Painter uh, tutorial, or rather, uh, this is more of a look at what's new in uh, Substance 8.1. Um, so, there is a physical scale property now available to, to use, or it's not a property, it's a function, option, I guess. Um, and I just wanted to show you what I've done to kind of set up my little test. Uh, so, I've got a little ob a couple of little objects in Modo. Um, We've got our little set of boxes down here which I've very carefully measured and then we've got another object which I haven't. Um, so this one is a two meter cube, this one's a one meter cube and this one's a 500 uh, millimeter cube. So why is that uh, interesting or even important? Uh, let's have a look at Substance Painter. Should have launched that first I suppose. Let's pause the recording. Okay, so in um, Substance, if I just start a new scene, uh, so let's go new, and then I'm going to select my scaling FBX. Now, um, it's a little bit important. Um, OBJ doesn't really contain any scaling information. Um, it gives you the distance apart between vertices, but it doesn't tell you kind of its meters or centimeters or anything. Uh, so Substance will automatically convert it to centimeters, uh, which in my um, situation, because I use Modo and Modo uses meters, my objects will come in too small. So I'm using an FBX for this one, which does contain that good information or the uh, scaling information. And when I import this in, there we go, there we have it. Now, first of all, it's not entirely obvious uh, what scale this is at. So I'm just going to go to my 3D only view here and then up in uh, viewport, is it no? Uh, viewport. Ah, my brain's gone. Ah, it's Windows Views Display Settings. If I slide to the bottom of this tab, uh, there is a show grid option and you'll notice that the grid scale at the bottom corner here is one meter so now we know that it's a one meter you know each of these blocks on the floor is a meter and let's just close that off and that makes sense because you know this two meter cube has got two divisions if i zoom in a bit the scale kind of changes and i believe this shows you the scale of the smallest grid so the smallest grid currently is 10 centimeters if I go in even further, we should get down to uh, one centimeter. So you can tell that your, you know, model is at size, at scale. Um, you know, providing the grid and the, you know, what you know about your object kind of makes sense. So um, that's the the first bit. Um, in the next bit, we'll have a look at how we can use that with a material. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so let's have a quick delve into how this works. So let me delete this layer out of here. I can use the two meter cube as a starting point and uh, let's pop this wood walnut on it. So let's drag and drop that into there. Now, as a default, this will use the UV projection, which uh, under the UV transforms doesn't give me any scaling information. I can tile it, uh, but I can't do anything else. If I slide down a little bit, underneath the little preview there, you'll find attributes, and that will tell you uh, how physically big this is. This was designed to be on a piece which is 150 centimeters by 150 centimeters with two centimeters of depth, which seems a lot, but there we go. So this is how it's projected. I mean, it looks quite nice, um, but this is a two meter cube. So what should it lo look like on a two meter cube? So rather than you know you having to multiply out uh, the size of your object, even knowing the size of your object, and you know working that out, uh, we can use a slightly different projection method. So triplanar, as an example, it's not the only one. And underneath AUV transforms now we have an option on the tiling. We have scaling and we have uh, sorry tiling and we have physical size. So if I switch it to physical size, it knows how big my cube is, it knows how big the material is, and it projects accordingly, uh, which is perfect. And that looks about right to me. 
so that was a small area a you know, small piece of wood um, so if I instantiate this across all my other uh, materials you'll see that it actually projects onto all of them in exactly the same way I'm just trying to get my sort of camera into a nice spot or light into a nice spot rather um, so they're all projecting exactly the same you can see that my little cube there is the same as this big uh, bigger cube is the same as this cube even though um, I was a bit sneaky and set all of my UV islands to the same size for all of these cubes so in theory you know under normal projection you know they would all uh, look different if I go back here and pop this back to a normal projection so if I go uh, UV projection you see this is very small and tight which is quite good this is a little bit bigger and looser and this is bigger and looser again because all of my UVs are the same size whereas if we go back to our triplanar projection we can see that they're all exactly the same size now you can achieve that by, with the tiling method but you have to kind of calculate it and you know who's got time for that <laughs> you know who's got time to figure out well how big's my model well how big's my um you know texture uh how do i get those to match um you know just it's not very uh how can i put it time efficient so this physical size gives us that option and if you don't like it you can always change the custom size so I've switched to custom size and it's gone to a 10 by 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter if I made it 100 by 100 it would adjust it accordingly it's a way of overriding this down here uh, if I put this to 150 by 150 it should be exactly the same so if I turn that off and turn that back on again should not change at all so you've got options to update it it's just you know um yeah why bother now you won't you'll find that some of these don't have a physical size in them um in which case you know you're going to have to use a custom size to try and you know uh, make that work uh, but you'll find a lot of materials do um so this wood's a bit abstract so what I've done is created a um, a little brick um, very simple material um, and I'm gonna um, go through that next just to hopefully clarify a few things so I'll talk to you then okay so the first thing I'll do is just show how these materials are kind of made so <coughs> excuse me um, we have um substance oh, sorry adobe sampler here and uh we're going to start a new uh, material so if i uh, just show you what i've got i've got this brick texture which i want to turn into a material so what i need to do is find that in my library or in my folders and drag and drop that on there and let's just minimize that uh, i'm going to go straight image to material there are other ways of doing it uh, but I'm just doing a, a quick example uh, and we also want to set the physical size so the physical size uh, we can change later uh, it's going to come in at 100 by 100 which is probably not right so I've just done a quick calculation so uh, I've got 16 bricks tall and I've approximated from a little reference on the internet um, the standard brick in the UK at least 65 millimeters and I've allowed 10 millimeters for um, you know the uh, mortar so we've got 16 times 8.5 so it's 136 centimeters so now if I go back to my sampler I can set this to 136 by 136 whoops 136 by 136 it's linked that's great so now I can uh, click on import and it should start churning away and calculating uh, my material you know it's going through and trying to figure out how high it is and so on and so forth so that's what we've got and I sincerely apologize if you can hear my neighbor's music it's not much I can do about that I'm afraid uh, so where are we so if I go to my image to material layer 
uh, I think I can see that this looks kind of backwards so if I flip that over in the on the invert normal yeah no I think it's all right as it is yeah no now I've looked around it from a, a different angle or two it, it looks right okay so now we've we've got that yeah I can adjust the kind of details I've uh, got here uh, so I can take out my micro details if I want to or my medium details uh, if I take out the large details then uh, we'll have nothing at all uh, but yeah I think I'll probably have the, all the large details uh, looking at it I think perhaps needs to be up there anyway okay so uh, we have a height invert which we can use you see that from my to my eye now looks the wrong way around uh, so let's invert that and we have an AO strength and D lighting so the D lighting is handy because if there's any sort of you know significant lighting uh, imperfections in your uh, image the D lighting uh, can take them out okay so I've created this then and I'm reasonably happy with it let's say I'm not but <laughs> let's just say I am uh, <coughs> excuse me um, at this point in time I can go into uh, my metadata and you know if I happen to have got this wrong uh, I can set it here uh, I'm not going to put any depth in and I think that's okay so I could add a description uh, a category in an author and so on and so forth even some uh, additional tags but I'm not going to here I'm just going to publish it so use the share button and I'm going to send to substance painter and now it's going to calculate all my maps out and send them out so now I know I've got a, a material which is 136 by 136 and I can use that in substance to um, you know uh, do my texturing uh, so that's just setting up one I thought that would be interesting um, you know to try and get my head around it at least um, so in the next one we'll We'll just quickly use this and uh, see uh, the effects. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so I'm back in Substance Painter and I've got my little material down here and I can drag and drop that into my uh, material layer stack here and it comes in like so. So that's obviously not at the correct scale. Uh, if I go down to my attributes I can see it's banked in my attribute scales down there so it's 136 by 136 and if I go back to my properties we can change UV projection to triplanar and it's still at tiling level so it's still not changed um, so rather than guess I can go to physical size and there we go it will fit it to my two meter wall and because this is a sink uh, one meter you know if I instantiate this across yeah you know, it's going to be consistent there's a one a one meter wall with so many bricks so if I count these you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve uh, which makes sense because previously I had 16 and that's at 136 centimeters yeah now I've got 12 and it's a 100 centimeters so it's it's fitting in and here we've got a uh, 50 centimeter so we've got one two three four five on that so it's just a real quick way of getting consistent material sizes across your objects regardless of how big your uv tile is you know whether your uv tiles are consistent and you know um whether you know what your scale is or not <laughs> or whether you want to eyeball it you can still change it using the custom size options so I could set that say okay well I don't want it at 136 I want it at 100 and it will give us a slightly different version and this one now should be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and 16 for the half at the top top of the bottom so it fits it perfectly into that uh, scale and all of our materials are exactly the same so I hope you found that useful. Um, it took me a while to find all that information. Uh, maybe I'm a bit daft, um, but you know, I, I, I'd like to think I'm typical of most users. 
Um, so I hope you found that useful. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll talk to you in another video.